more unruly than the ones we saw a lot more at Azteca Stadium some five years ago. So up next, Chavez versus Gonzalez, our main event. Julio Cesar Chavez, considered by many the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. In his prime, a relentless in-fighter and calculating technician. It has been a remarkable 18-year journey, but like so many terrific but aging athletes before him, he tries to defy the calendar. Tonight's fight begs the question, is this the last hurrah for the man called J.C. Superstar? It is inevitable that all great fighters will eventually bow to the most indefatigable of opponents, Father Time. But it seemed that would never happen to Julio Cesar Chavez. For during the first 13 years of his storybook career, he won 87 straight bouts, five world titles, and was unanimously considered the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter of his time as the most beloved, most successful fighter in Mexico, 15,000 fans appeared for a public workout. And a record-breaking 135,000 people filled Mexico City's Azteca Stadium for one of his fights. I always believed I would become a champion, but I never thought I would reach this kind of stature. The inevitability of time and a perfect Frankie Randall one-two punch finally ended Chavez's 14-year unbeaten streak. I never believed I was Superman. I knew that sooner or later I would have to lose. Despite avenging his only loss and winning six straight bouts, the 33-year-old Chavez was plagued by marital problems, reported financial difficulties, and a tendency to gain too much weight between fights. And two years ago, a convincing stoppage by Oscar de la Hoya forever tarnished his reputation for invincibility. A few years ago, I had a depressed morale, and I didn't care whether I won or lost. But the most important thing is that I have a positive mindset now. After winning three bouts over forgettable foes, he faces a formidable opponent seven years his junior, Miguel Angel Gonzalez. I think that in his last uh, few fights, uh, he's had some uh, good moments, but he's not the same. He's washed up. His best fights are behind him. In order for Julio Cesar Chavez to prove he is not washed up, he must not only beat Gonzalez, he must once again postpone the inevitable and defeat Father Time. And yes, Father Time uh, can be very cruel. How will this fight affect Chavez's place in history if he loses, Ferdy? When a great super champion loses his last fight, I don't think it tarnishes him. Joe Lewis got knocked out by uh, uh, a tough Marciano. Ali lost to Holmes in, in a shameful fight. What did it do to them? Nothing. Just, it's just the last fight of a brilliant career. Should he lose, and I don't think by any chance this is a done deal, should he lose, it won't affect him one bit. He'll still be the greatest Mexican champion to come down the pike, in my opinion. What about Gonzalez? Will he become a national hero should he win tonight? He'll have that jinx of the gunfighter that shot the great gunfighter. They never, never give credit. I mean, it took a long time for Marciano to overcome the shame of having beaten Lewis. Nobody liked Holmes because of what he did to Ali. This guy wins here, and he beats Chavez. They won't like him for it. It'll take him a long time to get back into public favor. That's just the way it is in boxing. We love our heroes. All right, in terms of styles and strategies, uh, Bobby Chez, do you look for a bull versus Matador scenario here tonight? Well, you know, we may very well have that. When a bull chases the Matador, the Matador has a, ch a choice. Kill or be killed. And right now, Julio Cesar Chavez is going to come at... Miguel Angel Gonzalez, and he's going to fight or die. How about your diagnosis? Keys to victory. You got it. Well, I'll tell you what. They're, they're size-wise. They're very close. But Chavez fights smaller. Gonzalez fights taller. Chavez is going to have to work in. Keys are working behind the jab, double and triple jab, working that jab in, followed by good straight right hands down the middle. And once Chavez gets in there, he has to come up underneath with that traditional left hook, one, two, maybe even three to the body, and then up to the head, as he's always done working that body, bringing the hands down, dismantling his foes, body first, and then head following. Now, Miguel and Hell Gonzalez are a little different. Even though they're close in height and reach, he fights taller, 
He wants to get in and out. He has to also work the body. He cannot leave Chavez's body alone. Well, uh, obviously, we momentarily lost power. We cannot hear anything ourselves here at Plaza de Torres. We apologize for the problem. We have no idea what just happened. But Steve Albert here ringside along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Bobby Chez, Jim Gray, a roving reporter. Uh, we hope that you can hear us back, uh, back home. And uh, we continue to uh, get ready for our main event, Chavez versus... Gonzalez and Bobby you were saying when we were so rudely interrupted well what I was saying was that Gonzalez has to work in a little differently he has to keep a distance between him and Chavez work the body but come back outside keep Chavez on the end of his gloves because he fights taller more stand up more longer range and he'll want to keep Chavez at the end of his gloves Chavez will want to compromise that height and reach get inside work the body and bring the power shots up inside those are the keys from both sides of the coin okay Bobby and Ferdy Pacheco this is a fight obviously that should have happened some four or five years ago, but I guess it's later uh, than sooner. Uh, what is the key for Gonzalez here? Is it keeping his distance and movement, although his oh, movement has been questionable? I, I think th that since you know, you, you know that Chavez is coming, the distance that, that he keeps is not as, um, it, it is very important, but the fact that he doesn't move his head and becomes a stationary head target for Chavez, as in his last fights, when you see him fight, he just doesn't move his head back and forth. So he's uh, Chavez has got a good target. The question here is not so much all that because ten years ago, eight years ago, five years ago, Chavez would have cleaned house with this guy. But this is a different guy now. This is a different Chavez, and that's what we're going to find out. Is this the great fighter that used to be or not? All right. The uh, fighters are getting ready to make their way in. Gonzalez first, and then Chavez. Gonzalez Bobby often fights to the level of his opponent. He looked impressive, although he lost against Oscar De La Hoya. He looked bad against Lamar Murphy. We'll see how that factors in against Chavez. You know, I clearly think Lamar Murphy out-hustled him and beat him, pushed him back a lot at the way Chavez is going to, although Chavez is a bigger puncher. Against De La Hoya, he rose to the occasion. You know what, Steve? When a fighter fights to the level of his competition, up and down, it's clearly a boxing phenomenon. I don't know why it happens. And Gonzalez also told us other keys for him are that Chavez has had too many distractions of late, beset by financial problems and personal problems and, and Ferdy and too many tough fights over the years that it's uh, taken its toll. I think the too many tough fights are big time stuff. One, one of the things that the, the, the famous Hands of Stone Roberto Ram told me yesterday, he said, I don't see him concentrated. I don't see that eye of, of uh, that lion that he used to have. He doesn't seem to be don't focused, see. concentrated on doing it, even though he says he is, even though he trained it. All fighters say that before a fight. The, the difficulty came. Here, here is uh, the entrance of uh, obviously getting booze, not seven. Uh, there is Miguel Angel Gonzalez, undefeated here in his hometown of Mexico City. We apologize again uh, for the problems before, but we understand we've just regained power at ringside. He's 16-0 with 13 knockouts in Mexico City, 11-1 in world title bouts. Miguel Angel Gonzalez, been about eight months since his last fight, once billed as a future superstar. And although an accomplished fighter never really achieved the greatness that was predicted, there's Julio Cesar Chavez getting ready to make his way in. You saw his great record in world championship fights. It'll probably be uh, chaos when he makes his way in, when the fans can see him. His first fight in Mexico City since February of 93 at Azteca Stadium. And so much has happened to this man since that memorable night. Let's just listen.
So, Julio Cesar Chavez with his accompaniment, making his way into the ring. Ferdy, are you concerned that if he's behind, Chavez will resort to street fighting, you know, headbutts and low blows, and what that could, you know, end this thing in controversy as we've seen with Chavez in the recent past? Yes, there's been some of that, and when he gets behind or when he gets dropping into the Randall fight, he tends to get dirty, he tends to get tough, he tends to get street fighter. Uh, of course, that for this crowd is going to be just, they're going to love that, but uh, by the same token, the officials, the referee, and so forth have got to be strong. Now, you, we just saw this last fight that we did. Mercifully, we got out of here with a draw, and therefore we didn't have a demonstration. But we saw people throwing things in the ring all, all over the place. Should he get dirty, the crowd will love it. And along those lines, if this is a close decision, does Chavez get it because he's the popular fighter? We shall see. So many factors. Let's see how they stack up as we go to the tail of the tape. Right here. At 35, Chavez is eight years older than Gonzalez. Chavez will turn 36 in July. At five foot eight, Gonzalez an inch taller than Chavez. Chavez's lightest weight in years. Chavez hasn't been at 140 in some time. It could affect his conditioning if the fight goes deep. And the reach is nearly even. And the key rules for this world championship fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. And here's, here's something to keep a close watch on after the last fight. If the fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth, the fight's ruled a technical draw. If it happens after the end of the fourth, they go to the cards. So here at the Plaza de Toros in Mexico City, getting ready for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. The wait is over. Arriba, Julio Cesar Chavez versus Miguel Angel Gonzalez. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Damas y caballeros, favor de ponerse de pie para escuchar el himno nacional de México. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the national anthem of Mexico, and tonight our singer, aquí está el cantante, demos la bienvenida a Carlos Cuevas. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridor, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Si ya patria tú tienes de oliva, de la paz del arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas si os haré un extraño enemigo, profanar con su planta tu suelo, Piensa, oh patria querida, que el cielo, un soldado en cada hijo te dio, un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el ritor, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! Muchas gracias a Carlos Cuevas. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 
caballeros bienvenidos los aficionados al box a la plaza de toros por el campeonato vacante peso super ligero del consejo mundial de boxeo we welcome you ladies and gentlemen to our feature bout of the evening brought to you by don king productions promotora alfaga and showtime events television this bout coming away sanctioned by the world boxing council celebrating its 35th anniversary presidente jose sulaiman supervisors eduardo lamazon y rex ross walker Junto con la Comisión de Boxeo de Distrito Federal, Presidente Victor Esquivel. Introducing now the judges scoring this bout from ringside, presentando a los jueces. Larry O'Connell, Chuck Hassett, and Terry Smith. Bien amigos, esta es la guerra, la pelea principal de la noche de 12 asaltos. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world. Ahora, damas y caballeros, público presente y aficionados de todo el mundo, it's showtime! With the vacant WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled, introducing our referee, el referee es Lupe Garcia. Presentando en la esquina azul, usando calzoncillo negro con franja de oro, introducing first in the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, un peleador de la ciudad de México. Tiene un peso de 63.5 kilogramos. He weighed in at the super lightweight limit, 140 pounds even, con un record de 42 victorias y solamente una derrota. Tiene 32 victorias por knockout. His record stands at 42 wins, one loss with 32 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the number two WBC super lightweight contender. Here is the former WBC lightweight champion of the world. Aquí está el sensacional ex campeón del mundo, peso ligero y actual clasificado número dos, peso super ligero. Demos la bienvenida al bravísimo Miguel Ángel González. Y su rival en la esquina roja con calzoncillo blanco con verde y rojo. His opponent in the red corner wearing white trunks with green and red trim. Representando Culiacán, Sinaloa, México. Pesando 63.5 kilogramos. He weighed in the same at 140 pounds. Tiene un record de 100 victorias. Dos derrotas y un empate con 83 victorias por knockout. His tremendous record includes 100 wins, two losses, one draw, and 83 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the six-time world champion in three weight divisions and the current WBC number one ranked super lightweight. Aquí tenemos al seis veces campeón del mundo en tres diferentes categorías. Vemos la bienvenida al gran campeón mexicano, Julio César Chávez. Aquí está el referí Lupe García. Bien, señores, ya platicamos en los vestidores. Hagan una buena pelea y que ganen mejor, señores. ¡Suerte los dos! We are coming to you from a makeshift bull ring, difficult, unsafe conditions, surly fans. The ring has been pelted throughout the night with solid substances. We were taken off the air moments ago. A power failure, a near impossible task for security as Gonzalez prays in his corner. Just too many people, 
Many have been drinking since about 5 o'clock. And uh, if they get really angry, anything's oh. possible. Here we go. Chavez Gonzalez. The wait is finally over. Crowd of about 50,000 on hand to see this one. Between these two former great champions. This first round is big, Steve. This sets the, the tempo. This sets the momentum. This gets the man in play. Gonzalez uh, very relaxed, uh, poised as a, uh, a bottle of water goes flying into the ring. He told us the keys are, are movement and distance. The crowd chanting early for Chavez. The bottle wasn't, wasn't thrown in the ring. It was thrown at a uh, photographer who is taking pictures of the people behind him. TV people were mad. Well, it wound up in the ring. Yeah, too bad. Question is, can Gonzalez maintain his distance against the Bull, Julio can, Cesar Chavez? The question is, can he maintain his distance and do some offense? Because right now he's maintaining distance, but nothing's happening. He's got to maintain his distance, but make it pay for him. He said he doesn't intend to uh, to be there for the body punches. Gonzalez in the black trunks. He doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chavez. He said he doesn't think Chavez punches hard, but uh, he mines the body. You used that term earlier. He works the body. Gonzalez said what he lost against De La Hoya, he gained in experience, and he'll put that to use against Chavez. Well, he's certainly not going to put experience to use against Chavez. He's got more experience than probably any fighter going today. Or right, three fighters. That's, that's probably true. Chavez right now is just waiting and finding the times, finding the rhythm. A kind of a nervous kind of jab right now by Miguel. A couple of left hooks there that got in from uh, Gonzalez. Frankie Randall told me he could hit him with right hands all night long. He did hit him with right hands all night long. He said that, that for him, he was open all night with the right hand. But Gonzalez uh, throws a leaping, a looping right hand, more of a roundhouse. It doesn't really go down the pipe. Frankie's is straight like a bullet. Randall, the first man and only man to put Chavez down. You notice that Gonzalez wings his punches. He loops them or whips them in, which could really open himself up to a countering shot from Chavez. So far, Chavez has not thrown anything powerful or meaningful. He just elbowed. <laughs> and Chavez he just doesn't elbowed look Gonzalez like, out of the way. He doesn't look like he's worked up much of a sweat here, just like Lopez, who uh, had difficulty in the last fight. Right now, Gonzalez doing all of the fight. I mean, that's nothing but Gonzalez right now. Hey, hey, get the Gonzalez really feels he's prepared mentally and physically for this fight, unlike the De La Hoya fight. Well, you know what? Right now, Gonzalez looks better than he has nice right in quite right some time. Fighting up to the level he's expected to. That's usually his case. Well, Chavez always fights it uh, slow first round, but this is very slow. Historically, he is a slow starter, and there's a good left countering hook by uh, Chavez. A very slow round for Chavez. Gonzalez is uh, normally a slow starter as well. Let's get it over to uh, Jim Gray right now. Jim. Hey, thank you, Steve. Big story developing. I have with me the president of the WBC, Hula, uh, Jose Suleiman. Jose, at the end of that fight, you say you saw that Lopez won the fight on the judges' card, two to one, a majority decision on a split decision. And you say that it was doctored. And now Carlos Chavez, the WBA supervisor, has it locked the scorecard round by round in his briefcase and won't let anybody see it. Well, I was informed by the WBC representative that according to our scorecards, uh, uh, Ricardo Lopez was ahead, the same scorecards, but our concentration sheet, Ricardo Lopez was ahead by one point on, on one of the judges, and he had one other judge in his favor. So and why? Mr. Mr. Conde was in favor of... Uh, of uh, why won't he let you or anybody else he, see the card? Well, uh, he told me that he saw in Dolby Shirley's card that by mistake, he had scored it the other way because the point deduction was given to the other fighter. And he said that he... Will you both, protest? I am, I am demanding and we are friends. And as soon as this fight is over, we are having a meeting and reviewing the whole thing. Thanks, Jose. This one smells bad. Thanks for trying to straighten out. Thank you. Steve? All right, Jim, but keep in mind that is the president of the WBC. He would like to see his man win. There's not an agenda there, is there? Oh. <laughs> Okay, it is uh, round two for the vacant WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Both starting out slowly in round one. Already Chavez has started out more quickly. Double jabs there to right hand. He's already got a left hook in the body in earlier while we were talking. Well, he wasn't going to go that slow. I mean, he went much slower. He'd been standing still. Well, he threw the first round away, that's for sure. 
A low that blow. Low. A low blow. And, and a butt. Yeah, Lupe Garcia has to act quickly now. Oh, not another one of those uh, nights. Let's hope not. You know, he cuts a lot, uh, this Chavez now. He, he, you know, this has been his fate now. We saw it a lot, the recent play. Well, that was a good hit, but against uh, De La Hoya. The jab being uh, deflected by Chavez. There's Chavez's jab now. Back see, comes Gonzalez. See, there's not a huge height and reach disparity as we're talking about, but Gonzalez fights more straight up and down, uses longer reach, a rangier, longer, lanky jab. Chavez fights shorter. Gonzalez uh, won't go side to side much. He has fast hands. He is heavy-handed. Has a good heart like Chavez. Gonzalez has been rocked. Some feel he has a suspect chin. Well, he didn't get a 42 and one <laughs> record with a suspect chin. Whoever hey, thought that was in the box. No, I think his chin's pretty good. De La Hoya is pretty well, and he gave back what he got. A lot of them, but his uh, corner trips it to uh, the weight problems. Now Chavez pushing Gonzalez back, and the he, crowd reacting. He got his attention with that left hook right hand. It was clean and on the money. So back comes Gonzalez. Good straight nice combinations by Chavez there. There's that left hook to the body. Digging left hook that uh, he is so famous for. Hooks to the body to the head. Oh, a winging right just over the head of Gonzalez. The uh, vicious infighting by Chavez. The pace is starting to take on, and the tone of the fight is starting to take on one that would lead an advantage to Chavez. Mixing it up on the inside. Digging training shots. shots by, yes, by uh, Chavez and going upstairs. There's a nice right uppercut by Gonzalez to the chin of Chavez. Chavez very hard to put down, only down once. 93 against Randall. Every fighter that fights Chavez has the same game plan. Keep a distance away from him, keep him away from the body shots. That's that's very easy to think about, but hard, hard to do against Chavez. We head for the bell in round two. Big miss there by Chavez. I think Gonzalez doing very well again. Watch the right hand. Watch the right hand, Antonio. You got a little tiny bleeding in the nose. They're just, they're just, they're just telling him he's got to step it up. He's got to step it up. Okay. They don't seem to be anxious or worried. All right, let's take a look at both things, the butt and the low blow. I don't know how you can watch two at the same time, but the head butt is more important. The low blow is next to nothing. There's the low blow. Boom. There he went the head. Now, that didn't look bad enough. That didn't look bad enough, but he certainly reacted badly. Conspicuous by his absence in Chavez's corner, longtime trainer Jose Buffalo Martin, who died recently in a car accident. Ignacio Beristain, who trains uh, Ricardo Lopez in the corner of Chavez. Chavez uh, should draw inspiration from that tragic loss. Well, all, all of us who follow South American fighting, we, we're going to miss Buffalo. He was good. I love him. We'll see if Chavez can turn back the clock. Return to vintage form here against fellow Mexican Miguel Angel Gonzalez, who's trying to uh, say that it's his time, his turn. Well, you know, he still has that youthful fire, and he's got a little more bounce to his step right now. Chavez, master at saving energy and harnessing his strength. Not really being active enough. Right now, the active fighter is Gonzalez. Chavez with the experience and the obvious public support. And he's popping to the body is uh, Gonzalez. He's not letting that body go. He jabs to the body. That's a quick way to get killed. But Chavez hey, can't pull the trigger. A sign of an old fighter. And many feel his skills, Chavez's skills, began to erode in the Pernell Whitaker fight. And there's that right hand that Randall says you can land when you want. Gonzalez just doesn't throw it straight enough for it to be real effective for him. Even as he throws it overhand, it's still effective. But that straight right hand Randall demonstrated the keys to unlock Chavez. Well, very, very few people throw that with the accuracy that Randall does, and the speed and the uh, force. I mean, he, that is his best weapon. Gonzalez says if he wins, he'll be the favorite Mexican fighter and grow into a legend like Chavez. 
He wants to carry that Mexican flag around the world. He says he is hungrier than Chavez. We'll find out. The hardest, hardest thing in, in boxing is to stay hungry when you're on top. Boy, that's hard. And this is the 104th fight of Chavez. Good hook. Beautiful left hook. Good hook landed right on the button. Didn't look like it had any effect, but it landed right on the button. A little trickle of blood from the, I believe, left nostril of Chavez. Chavez getting punches in in that clinch. I think they're about even in that. In that. They, they both exchange punches. Yeah, they both kind of turned their heads to the side and wrecked, wrecked each other's jaws a little bit. A little holding and hitting by both men. I can see who's doing the leading. Once again, we're, we're looking at Chavez going back, not forward. Pressing the attack. I mean, you know, he's so used to going forward and conquering everybody, it's odd to see him going back eating gas. They're holding and hitting by Gonzalez. Chavez with Gonzalez and Israel using everything, including elbows, and the crowd erupts he as the bell sounds. He hit him with two good solid elbows and a forearm. Gentlemen, to me, he didn't do enough to win that round. Uh, uh, Chavez, he, I mean, I'm waiting for him to get started. I'm either waiting for somebody that's not here tonight or something is wrong. He's, he's just not getting started. Sometimes you wake no, up no, and you can't no, get no, started. Well, that's what you call Ole. I hate to say. Easy now. He's a few months younger than me. <laughs> Chavez, nice whipping left hook to the body. Let's watch it. And it's vintage Chavez. What? That, that was up. And he doesn't let him go. I mean, no matter when you get close to Chavez, you get hit. Take a look at the other one, Bob. Yeah, you know, he, he likes to press him into the ropes. He's got to cut that gap down, trying to work the body. He's trying to block on the inside. The, the punches are not clean. He, that one was not too bad, but you'll see a little elbow and shoulder in here. There you go. <laughs> he hit you with everything he can. All right, round four. Gonzalez starts out with a uh, left hook to the head of Chavez. Now uh, an overhand right by Gonzalez. And these punches are getting through. Again, the Gonzalez on the offensive, pushing Chavez back, which we're not used to seeing. Chavez's face getting red and has been red for, uh, since the second round. Whereas Gonzalez is unmarked. Combination by Chavez. Nice left hook inside, but he doesn't follow it up with anything. The, old, the older Chavez would have come back with two more combinations. There's the online scoring. we got Chavez up. Yeah, Chavez up. There must be heavy favor. And it must be in a Mexican neighborhood. No holding, uh, says the referee uh, don't Garcia. Pull don't pull him. Don't, uh, don't pull him with you. Right, with uh, Chavez in mind. Slowing down a bit here in round four. Chavez just seems to uh, be waiting for something to happen. He's waiting for something, and I'm not sure what. His timing may be off. We could just have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Well, we saw him uh, resting comfortably uh, before the uh, fight earlier, along with uh, Gonzalez. He just didn't seem up. But everybody has their own way of preparing. Well, that's that fire that Duran talked about. He didn't see the fire in his eyes. And boy, there's a guy that knows about fire in the eyes. It's Durant. <laughs> I hate to stand next to him when he's peaceful. He's sitting right behind us. Yeah, no, he's one of my all-time favorites. Maybe the best lightweight that's ever lived. I was going to say, in my opinion, the best one that I've ever seen. And I've been looking at him for a long time. Well, Manos de Piedras is, is looking on hands of stone. Chavez trying to come on here late in round four. The crowd trying to get behind him. But he hasn't given much to uh, cheer about yet. Now the dancing. Gavin needs to do something good here to take this. 
This is the trimmest Chavez has looked in a long time, but it's not helping him. And then Gonzalez hitting on the break, and he gets a warning from Lupe Garcia. He tell him he take one point away from him if he does that. They touch gloves, though. Well, no, no, these two guys were friends. Are friends. Not while you're in the ring, there are no such things. Oh, oh good left hook by Chavez. Right flush on the face of Gonzalez. Beautiful combination. Oh, oh man. comes Chavez with a big right. And the he, bell sound. He started to get home with those punches. I don't know if it won him the round, but boy, it brought him close. Very hard he to hear the bell. Here you go. Two golpes que 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 mete limpios él le van a dar round. So nada le damos, Mike. Three minutes, please. The punches are all on your on your arms and your shoulders. You should you should just fend them off. Okay, muy bien, hondo, profundo. Very good. Breathe deep. Rápido, rápido, rápido. Pum pum. Salga ese pum pum otra vez. Move. Él se va a cansar. Usted no. He is going to get tired. You're not. He is going to get tired. You're not. Let's leave that last big hook. Might have taken that round for him because he really needed something nice. There you go. Now that's good. That second one lands. It could have been trouble. Right after he came through with another clean right hand right at the belt. Yeah, he punctuated that uh, fourth round with that right hand to end the round. So now maybe he feels a little fire. Maybe that stoked him up a little bit. Maybe he senses he can hit this kid. But he uh, shot another one after the bell just for good measure. Abel Sanchez, who's trained seven world champions, talking to Gonzalez earlier. He's the trainer. And of course, the game plan's got to include that Chavez is going to get tired, but you're not. That's got to be one of the points. Chavez comes forward. This is the best he's looked in the fight. Oh, yeah, beautiful double left hook, one underneath, one up top. And they were clean. And he looked good doing it. Gonzalez holding on to him. Now he uh, gets back, maintains his distance, tries to regroup. I think he's really starting to feel the hurt. Nice jab. I see, Chavez is one of those guys that has heavy hands. Even though he's being outpointed by Melter Taylor way back when, his punches were doing all the damage. The facial damage is swelling the black and blue to cuts. He has powerful punches, and he has heavy hands. Combination uh, upstairs by Gonzalez, but uh, blocked. That comes Chavez. Nice triple jab by Chavez. That's how he needs to work in and fire that right hand. And those are the punches that you speak of. Those are the ones that mount up and do damage to your face. Meldrick and many others. Nice left cross there by Gonzalez. Now some head movement, bobbing and weaving by uh, Chavez. First time we've seen that tonight. Chavez uh, defensively doing the job too now, blocking punches. You see, most of that's kind of falling short. It looks good, not real effective, but Chavez is not answering, so he's not winning the combination. Gonzalez on the offensive, a winging right, but a grazing blow. Comes back with a left cross. That jab is not making contact by Gonzalez. The left hook did, but it was partially blocked. The jab by Chavez looking to set up the right. Oh, a right uppercut by Gonzalez. It got Chavez's attention. Oh, Chavez didn't take advantage of the little uh, momentary superiority he showed at the end of that last round. He kept going backwards here in this round. And uh, it's almost like he took a round off the rest. Yeah. He hasn't done enough to rest yet. Yeah, well. The old Chavez would have pounced right on his opponent after the end of that last round. Yeah. With an advantage like that, you got to run across and say, hey, let me start off where I left off. But he didn't. Travis is on his toes too much. He's not a fighter who bounces. He's an older fighter coupled with the fact that that's just not his style. That's not going to make him be effective. And he's getting hit. And Gonzalez said, the thing i got to do is get Chavez out of his game plan. We talked about Roberto Duran. He's behind us ringside on the uh, Spanish uh, telecast, uh, the simulcast over there. And, uh, boy, active since 1967. And he's still fighting. He's going to fight again. He was five years old in 67, Steve. Well, not in his, so old after. No, you're not. in his prime, a tremendous mix of skill and ferocity. Roberto Duran. 
double hooks by Chavez, and and the, you can see the a flash of the old Chavez here. One, two, and then back again. You see that? That's the old Chavez. But then he collapsed into the middle eight Chavez. Don't stop. Punch when you stop. Sigue deseando, Julio. No se apoye. Tranquilo. Ok, vamos bien, Julio. Okay. Haga su pelea. Make it your fight. Make him fight oh. your fight. Good advice, but he hadn't done it. Round six begins. Chavez continues to assert his authority. Chavez has always been a master to it, taking away the second half of a fight against anyone who's getting ahead on him early. He's real good at his strategic maneuvers in the late, late parts of every fight. Combination to the head by Gonzalez. A couple of those were low in the early part. The problem, problem with that is, as this fight goes longer, he should get more tired. With the age and with the uh, disadvantage of 100 some odd fights, he should start wearing out. And it doesn't look like Mr. Gonzalez figures to lose any steam. And the weight uh, situation as well. He was 140. Oh, just missed with that right. He was 148 his last fight. 151 his heaviest two fights ago against Tony Martin. Talking about Chavez. And all of a sudden, getting down to 140. That has to take its toll. And maybe because this crowd admires and loves him so much, there's been an absence of food stuff thrown in the ring. Nothing's thrown in the ring. So at least the fans are behaving for Chavez. There's a blessing until the decision comes. They do. They have so much respect uh, for uh, this guy that uh, an honor that unless, of course, something happens later. Let, let, let's not think of later. Let's watch a good fight. Holding and hitting there and uh, a left hook by uh, Chavez that got through. They're both doing it. Referee said, let's clean up the fight. Let's fight cleanly. Guadalupe Garcia from Mexico. Here we go again. Gonzalez keeping his hands active, 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 always punching, always moving. Whereas Chavez seems to be ready to load, but never does. I mean, when he does, he comes close, but, uh, you know, you got to do more than that. See the action, the activity on the part you know, it's very of difficult. Gonzalez. It's very difficult as a, as a fighter, someone who's fought for so many years, to watch a guy who you know his mind is seeing things that he should be doing, exactly. his body's just not cooperating, and it's somehow frustrating for me sitting here watching someone. Just can't react as well as he used to. Well, you see it, but it doesn't happen. I once worked in the corner with a great Sugar Ray Robinson at the end of his career. I thought that was the greatest night of my life until I worked on the corner. He just kept coming back to me. I see it, but I can't throw it. I felt so bad. I mean, it was the worst night of my life in boxing. Gonzalez, eight years younger than Chavez at 27. Well, Chavez with a straight right hand that popped him right in the nose. It may have been the best Chavez by a punch of that round. He hasn't done anything. Chavez bleeding from his nostrils a little bit, too. The punch is starting to catch up with him, too, the age factor once again when he gets hit. Not, his body's not reacting as well as he used to. Chavez's oh, jab oh, beginning to find a home, too. He's doubling up. And there's a straight left, a straight right. Combination by Chavez at the bell. He keeps finishing strong at the bell. But it's not enough. You can't just finish with the last three punches. Trying to steal around. Can't do it. Maybe you can in here, though, on the other hand. Más agua, más agua. Keep your, keep your guard up. Don't let him land those punches. You got to keep the jab going con continuously. And then throw your right hand. Keep punching. Keep punching. Jab, jab. Then move out. Jab, jab. Move out. Throw the right hand. Motion, motion. Well, let's see what Chavez does when he works the jabs. Missed by a mile. And uh, in the meantime, a little tiny hook there in regard, and nothing else happened. All right, round seven. This big crowd at the Plaza de Toros. Chavez appeared to come out just now with a little more uh, vim and vinegar there, a little more hey, spring to his legs. Mal, Julio. He better do Video. something. We are halfway through. Let's get some unofficial scorecards. Bobby first. Well, you know, I said 59-55. I don't think Chavez has done much. I gave him a round. <laughs> I just don't see. 
I, I, I was going to, if Bobby hadn't said it, I was going to apologize for my scorecard, 59-55. Gonzalez ahead. I gave him one round to Chavez. I'm, you know, remember where we're at, gang. That's all I can say. I'm just telling you what I see. I, well, we got two Mexicans in the ring, but this is Chavez country. And uh, as Bobby has mentioned, agendas are present. 4-2, uh, Chavez on the odd line, you just saw. They have Chavez ahead 4-2? If I'm not mistaken. I missed that one, yes. I apologize. Minute gone by in round seven. Get on the end, A little poke there on the uh, break by Gonzalez. He'll try anything, and so will Chavez. Here comes the debris, gentlemen. Yeah, there are well, uh, bottles I talk, and... Uh, I, I talked too soon. <laughs> Yeah, things coming into the uh, into the ring because uh, they obviously can see what's going on in front of them, and Gonzalez is winning. And uh, may maybe that's the satisfaction, frustration that Chavez is not giving him the old. That's a great jab, great jab by by Chavez. It's Strong a good body shot too. Threw a nice right hand and a good body shot. But when he gets inside, he allows Miguel to just rip him apart with that right hand. And Gonzalez is able to slip some of those punches as well. He's fast, maybe too fast for, for the aging Chavez. Well, what is it they say? He's still strong and still smart, but speed overpowers Chavez. Overwhelms him. Reflexes, that's the name of this game, and that's the first thing that goes when you get old. The reflexes go. And Gonzalez is uh, landing with those swift little inside uppercuts. The main thing is it's busy. It's Chavez busy. is having a better round, though. He's landing a lot more clean shots. Good shot. Just like that. Duck to the body and hook to the head. Let's see how Different Gonzalez time. reacts. The crowd again will erupt at anything Chavez does. That was very good for, for Chavez. Very good. Another good leaping little jab in there. But nothing when he, once he got inside. Gonzalez trying the body shots but not doing much damage. No, what it is, it's a continuous rain of blows. I'm talking about Gonzalez, oh. yeah. I understand Chavez. Here's the left jab that got through by uh, Gonzalez. But he didn't follow it up, Bobby. He was one and done. That's part of that problem with that age thing, too. You don't pull the trigger. Although he's pressing pretty effectively now, and it looks like a little fatigue factor might have set in with Miguel and Gonzalez just a little bit. Much better round with Chavez. Pretty left hook some there. of the big shots clean, Steve. Yeah, good left clean hook there by uh, Chavez. Much better, Chavez. Much better. May maybe the best since his, he won that last one. It may be the best. I gave him that one. 50,000 plus on hand at the Plaza de Toros in the heart of Mexico City and uh, things have calmed down just a little bit in terms of the unruly fans. It's the eighth round already. He's not looking, he's not seeing your punches. Travis, Travis clearly trying to close the distance. He doesn't want that distance. Here you see him step into him with the one-two, working that body, coming back up top. He just can't continue pulling the trigger and stepping around his opponent, but he is clearly trying to shut that distance down. Chavez with the mouthpiece hanging out just does not look the way he used to look in uh, vintage Chavez days when he looked like a, uh, a lion hey, coming out of the, the, the cage. Looked, he used to look like he couldn't wait for the bell ring. I mean, like, oh, another head, another butt. Another head butt. Yeah, the heads came together. As more stuff comes flying into the ring. We don't want to see appear to be a cut on either man, but... Both times, I guess from, from all the disasters that have happened to him recently, Chavez looks at him at his glove, expecting to see blood. Again, if the fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt after the end of the fourth round, they go to the scorecards. It's now round eight. Oh, I don't want to see this again after the last one. We had it in the Lopez. Uh, that was episode. low. low big low blow. Big time low blow. That was south of the equator. Time out. Things are going to get strange. He can have, oh, look out. A cushion just came flying in front of our faces, and things are coming our way now. Okay, he's flying in from everywhere, gentlemen. He has up to uh, five minutes to recover, but he only takes about 30 seconds. If he can't continue, he loses, but no problem. Just giving you the rules. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Look out. Uh -oh. You saw that bottle come uh -oh. down. Uh -oh. Wow. And time out. Now Chavez uh, giving the evil eye to somebody in the crowd. Oh. And now Garcia says, let's continue. He stopped it for a split second. Well, that's dangerous. Uh, not just, I mean, it's a plastic bottle and it's not life threatening, but boy, that's a dangerous thing to start doing. Beautiful left, left hook by Chavez. By Chavez. He pushed Gonzalez back there. Now, now Chavez is beginning to look like Chavez. He, he's beginning to get his mind on business. Maybe uh, Chavez going through his mind now. I got, in, in order to stop a potential riot, I got to beat this guy up. Another big hook. I, I'm afraid that this is his mind at all. What he's the, thinking about is I got to knock this guy out. At the end of Joe Lewis's career, he was beaten from pillar to post by Jersey Joe Walcott. At the end of the fight, they announced a decision for Joe Lewis for sentimental reasons. And I don't know if that'll go over so well. These left hooks are getting in from Chavez, Bobby. Chavez looking good, looking good. He's starting to hurt Gonzalez, slowing him down significantly. Chavez coming on. These are vicious left hooks. Oh. Right, right hand, a left hook, double up on the left hook. And Gonzalez is stunned. Gonzalez doing a little bit of play in there. going wild with every Chavez punch and those left hooks are doing damage. Good round for Chavez. Good round. Gonzalez's Julio. eyes swelling too. Julio coming on. Gonzalez down three times in his career. There's the jab by Chavez. The crowd sensing 30 seconds and counting in round eight. Borderline low punch but nobody called it. It's okay. Chavez landing much more cleanly in this round than all the other rounds probably put together. Yep. Looking more like Chavez than ever before. But don't forget now, Gonzalez has great heart. He's demonstrated that throughout his career. He survived De La Hoya, did he? And he gave De La Hoya some lumps to take home, too. He did. He bloodied his face and rearranged a few things. He looked good in defeat. Countering left hook by Chavez. He walked into a beautiful left hook. Big time for Chavez. You, you're throwing combinations and dropping your hands, that's where you get hit. But take a look at that butt. They're not looking, you see that, that doesn't look like much right there. It's hard to see a butt being that, that impressive. Bobby. Yeah, well, the, bl the low blow is a little easier to see. He comes Whoa. down, and he is way south with that punch. That was clean, and that was hard. Ready for round nine. Chavez using all his wiles as champion, and that includes elbows and low blows along with jabs and hooks. And Chavez ran out. Like saying, I like that last round. Let me go. To more of that. Yeah, this is a different job, is it? You hit him on the break. No. It's a, it's a good thing he didn't take a point away. He just said, come on, I'm giving you a break. Let's have an easy fight. Let's have a clean fight. He gave him a break. He didn't take away point. Get down, he Bye. says to the corner. Yep. Hey, we're talking to Abel Sanchez Gonzalez, his trainer. See a little bit of everything here tonight. Well, they threw our cameraman out. That's, <laughs> well, by Chavez. That left hook's been landing all night long. He's got to be doing some damage. I mean, he's certainly getting his attention. You know, we just can't but imagine if it was the same left hook that Chavez used to throw. Gonzalez just Well, yeah, he's doing pretty good right now. Old man that he is, he's doing pretty well. Gonzalez, former lightweight champion, his second attempt at this title. Right now, Chavez is trying to get the right hand home a little more, too. Chavez fighting back, but going back, but not getting hit at all. Whereas before, he was going back and getting hit. But now he's going back and not getting hit. Ooh, nice right hand by Gonzalez. Gonzalez beginning to put those punches back together again. Chavez letting him off the hook. Nice exchange there. They both landed. Yeah. Hey, sweeping jab in the air by Chavez, missing badly. Low again, not bad, but low. 
Cobb is now uh, patiently waiting for another opportunity to fire away. At See that left hook in that shoulder following? Hits him with a left hook, then slams the shoulder right into his face, pushing him off. That has to hurt. Gonzalez now uh, investigating the left hook himself, but Cobb is able to ward it off. But the curious thing is he's taking a play away. He, he's the one that's coming. He's the one that's doing the fighting. After that brilliant last round, out of gas. Chavez not doing what he did. He let, he let him get by. Chavez and let him get by and take control of that round again. He hadn't got that many to give away, folks. That's the ninth round. That's three more after this one. Things are getting tough for Julio Chavez. This is a close one. If it's close, Chavez will win. That's what we said earlier. He's the popular fighter, and the judges have to be influenced by that. After the bell, they continue. What are you waiting for? Don't let him get away. You must throw more. Close the eye. Something's in his eye. Got the ice bag on it. Not in swell. Well. They're using ice bags. I've seen that for a while. He can't go anymore. You got to take advantage of him. You got to take Hoya. advantage of him. Come on. Sorry, Bertie. I just wanted to mention Oscar De La Hoya. You could just about see him there, the WBC Waterway champ, yeah. with a big smile. The winner of this fight could get a rematch with him, or if Chavez wins, he could uh, fight Trinidad. I'd like to see a Trinidad fight with either of these guys should they win. Oh, oh, here we go. That good. He starts that good, Olio. Olio starts out that double left hook underneath and then up top. Now look, the news must be getting to him that he's only got three rounds to go, and he just may be behind. I think he's behind all right, but not by a ton. Well, I got him behind oh. by three points. I got him behind by a point now. Gonzalez again uh, coming forward, pressing the attack, digging right and up a cut. To the oh, nice combination by Gonzalez. The fans at home have Chavez up six rounds to three through nine. I have him behind five rounds to four. And I wouldn't even want to guess what the judges have him at. Larry O'Connell of London, Terry Smith of San Francisco, Chuck Cassidy of Buena Park, California. Anywhere in the realm of close, and Chavez gets it. I would have to agree. See, on the inside, when they come to clinch like that, Gonzalez is very quick to whip his right hand across Chavez's jaw to score points, while Chavez does not offer the same kind. Whipping left hook no. that got in by Chavez. Chavez usually looks at the referee like looking for help. What's he looking for? He's been doing that a lot lately in these recent fights. Now Chavez coming forward. Many in the local Latin media here thought that the Chavez has lost some face and credibility because he's not got not given many of his recent uh, opponents, uh, people who have given him trouble, credit. The credit that's due. There's a hopping straight left by Chavez that got in. Nice, nice. A simple shotgun jab. And that was a typical example. Oh, nice. His jab is pretty good. Yeah, Gonzalez comes right back. Back to Chavez. Good exchange. And that triple left hook was beautiful by Chavez. Well, obviously, there's a distraction in the crowd. People will watch that faster than they will the pros in front of them. Oh, no, fans, some of the amateurs oh. are more exciting. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, good right uppercut by Gonzalez, but so hard to hurt Chavez. He's got a hard head. <laughs> nice left hooks by Gonzalez to the head of Chavez. 
This really is tight. Temple! The end of round 10. That might have been the closest round of the fight, Steve. Mm -hmm. Well, I gave it to Chavez. That round. Okay. Si no, tirar, quites las cuerdas. Amarlo, quites el. Take Agua. off. Perfecto, get man. off the ropes and tie perfecto, him up when he gets close. Vamos. Don't let him get punching room. Tie him up. Lo más no se me esté con las cuerdas. He, he'll kill you if you get next to the ropes. Don't get to the ropes. Él está muerto, Mike. Está He's muerto. Dead, dead now. He's pare. dead. He's razón. tired. Agua. Don't blow your nose. He, he thinks it's broken. This one and one more and we win it. We need to win these two. Don't stop now. You're doing well. We need these two rounds. Only two more. Chavez obviously tiring at the end of these late rounds. We go into the championship rounds. Round 11. Can Gonzalez take advantage of the situation? For the third or fourth round in a row, Chavez runs out, or then a semi-jog, runs out to face Gonzalez. Oh, nice hook. Swift that tuck by Chavez. What a beautiful shot by Chavez. Followed with a nice right hand too, Steve. And that settles the issue where this guy's got a jaw now, because he's been getting gonged and he's got a jaw. And if you don't think Chavez has a big heart, he probably is fighting with a broken nose. Well, at least that's what they figure in the corner. That's part for the course, though, guys. We all get it flattened somehow. <laughs> oh, yours is ever broken, Bob? Oh, four times or so. You just learned to live with it. Now, there he is, fighting in retreat again when he needs it, when he needs this. He needs to impress. He needs to come on. Yet he's going back. It's Chavez we're speaking of here. But he knows what we know and what everybody knows. All he has to do is squeak one out here and he'll get it. Survive to, to hear the bell at the end of 12. Gonzalez has to win overwhelmingly if he wins on points. Well, overwhelming is out of the question because it's already very close. Who wins these two rounds? Well, this I know that. This, is, this that. is the fight. This is the fight right here. This one in the next one. Gonzalez is going to have to knock him out. Oh, you have to win. Well, I'll tell you, it's gotten so close that I believe that that may be the case. You know what the, how the judges are with Chavez. He's he's the one feared, if not revered, by all, including the judges. But do you think Chavez is, is ahead, fair and square? Right now, I have this fight just about a dead even, and it's anybody's fight the last two rounds. And so far, Chavez is using ring generalship in his last, well, not his last round, but his next to last round. He's winning the round. Came out real strong. Digging shots there to the uh, ribs. Gonzalez hasn't Mitchell. done too much to take the play away from him. So this looks very even. <laughs> I mean, you know, on the scorecards, it could be a draw. Right oh, no. But that's not going to happen with the judges. Gonzalez is waiting too much. He's yeah. waiting way too much. Too much fainting. Just go in there and throw. Gonzalez tired too. See, Chavez can't win the fight going backwards. He tried it with Frankie Randall. Oh, didn't work. Straight left by Chavez that got through Gonzalez's gloves. And it found a home. Oh, it's round 11. Hitting on the break. Oh, Chavez closes strong. Yeah, yeah once yeah, again, that's oh. the third or fourth time that's happened. He He's won the last three rounds doing that. Finish big, finish big. Now, now they've got the end swell in. He's cut. There's nothing, there's nothing. Now let's go over to the blue corner and see what's happening here. Last one, baby. If we don't, if we don't win this round, they're going to take it away from us. If we win this round, we're the champs. Let's go out there and win this round. If we don't, we can't win here. 
you get you told him the right story there. Sanchez knows the score in more ways than one. Here we go, round 12. So many of the first 11 rounds were close. It it probably will come down to this. And and uh, look at the left, left for the same, for the first time has got a closed eye. Yeah, his left. Le his left eye is in bad shape. For the first time, well, that, that's what you listen. That's what we all talk about with Chavez. He works and works and works, and all of a sudden your face is destroyed. That's just happened to him. Gonzalez pressing the attack. This round may very well decide the winner of this fight, whether he gets it or not. Gonzalez moves forward, a backpedaling Chavez. Gonzalez. Leave up, leave up. Leave him alone. That was on the hip. Yeah, that wasn't low. Let's let this guy fight his fight. He's got three minutes. Now that was that low. Was low. That was low. Low by Chavez. Hey, no knockdowns in this fight. Him. About a minute gone by in the last round. The round that could determine the winner. So far, Chavez fighting strangely. He's going back. He had to throw the punch of feet this day. That's not the way to win the championship. He must think he's way ahead. I think he's saving himself for that last minute like he did yeah. in the last three rounds, Ferdy. He yeah. put together some onslaught in the last 30 seconds. The last four or five rounds will steal a lot of them, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what a We're having does. a power failure here, folks. Oh, no. The lights are starting to dim. Oh, no. Tonight, the lights went out in Mexico. You got that right. We'll be singing a new tune. Midway through the 12th round. Chavez has to make his move now. Yeah, we, we're right in the middle. He better do something. He lost the first part of that. He lost the first part of the round, but not big. He closes strong. He can take this round. Well, he did nothing. I mean, he, uh, if, if... You see the lights dimming in and out. If Gonzalez doesn't attack now, he's crazy. He's got to go at it before the lights go out. They're going out. We have a minute to go. Wait a minute now. The referee, Lupe Garcia, is calling time. Chavez lost his mouthpiece. He did. But that, but that's bad for <laughs> He spit it out. Is, isn't he realized the lights are going out? <laughs> I know. Let's get this thing Come over on. with. We only got a minute to go. Let's yeah. not have, let's not dilly-dally. What's the referee? Let him have instructions and everything? Yeah. He gave not, the lights are flickering. I don't know if you could tell, but they are. And a lot of them are out. Holding and hitting. Both of them just clanking to each other. Garcia again. Chavez just trying to dig in with those elbows. Good combination to the head by Gonzalez. Back comes Chavez, but he missed. I give the last round so far to Gonzalez by oh boy. a lot. Oh, boy. And he's only got half a minute to change things, does Chavez. Although I have him ahead by a point going into it. As the lights continue to flicker. I have Gonzalez going ahead by one point out of 105 to 104, and he's winning this one. He is winning this one. I have Chavez up 105, 104 going in. Dramatic he's losing ending. this one. Well, you got it in a draw, and I got the other guy winning. If this continues. <laughs> Final 10 seconds. Let's see if Chavez can turn it up. Here it goes. There's the battle. The fight's over. And Who folks, won? And folks, I got Gonzalez ahead. And uh, this is going to be nasty. 115. Bobby, who do you have ahead? I'll tell you what, I coming all the way down to a dead solid draw. Oh. I got 113, 115 by two points. 114, 114, that's the score. I'm sure mine is not going to be the uh, judges' scorecards. Well, you got a lot of nervous people here at the Plaza de Toros. Better than 50,000 fans, and it's already beginning to get ornery and unruly in the ring. And the beatings will now things commence. Is, yes, and things is, uh oh, I just got hit with something. That was a cushion. cushion. As long as not the seat, we're the all seat right. cushions are starting to yeah. fly, fellas. Yeah. Plenty of seat cushions. And you can see them winging in the background. Gonzalez, meanwhile, uh, being There's hoisted another above. There's another one. Things are coming down now more frequently. I'm not going up. Water bottles, uh, food. Everything. They are coming. We've had a combination of hair conditioner packets, ice rolls, cups, tape, gum wrappers, water bottles. If they have a big bottle of that conditioner, uh, I could use them. Yeah, I ran out. Cashews, pesos, chocolates, seat cushions. You, got you it. know it was nerve-wracking to me in the first part of that. I, I didn't want to say anything to jinx anybody, but I saw a red, those, those red uh, lasers that, that uh, you use to aim rifles playing on his back. You know that? Oh, boy, that makes me nervous. The laser. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah, there's a there's a new little laser people have. You can point to things up to like 100 yards away, but it's, it's just a pen laser. I, I hope so, buddy. That makes me feel better. 
Well, if this man wins the fight, duck. Well, I don't think that's a significant uh, word to use. I think run for your life, maybe. Yeah. Not strong enough for you, huh? We, we can't get out of here. No, it's a very, very closed-in situation. Oh, right on target. Right, hit Steve right on the head. That's a tar uh, fortunately a cushion, but still it hits your glasses, and uh, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, well, that was a great shot, folks, right on top of my head. I'm glad it was only a seat cushion. Once again, I have it 115, 113, Gonzalez, and I'm confident sitting here that I'm wrong, according to what the judges are going to say, because in Mexico City, I cannot see him losing this fight. Well, if he won it, he stole it. Well, because he, he, you know, at the end of a lot of the rounds, he just turned it up, and that was it. Yeah, if, if they were be they were betting from memory. I mean, they were judging it from memory. It was a good fight. Could it be a changing of the guard? It could be. Although, Ch I, I, I predict if this guy loses, Chavez loses, he continues to fight. I don't see him stopping. Well, I don't know what this proved. He didn't. He certainly didn't defy father time. He looks like an old fighter. He does. Chavez, whether he wins or loses. But not an old shot fighter. You know, with the, the, right. the, 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 the uh, woods are filled with fighters not coming out who are, who are shot or close to shot, and they still continue to fight. I mean, that, and this guy who loves... Look, look, look at that, look at that eye. His, at his nose is bumped, and the eye is closed, too. His, he's all bumped up. Wow, Gonzalez no, no, he a just, mess. He, you know what he said? He said, no pelea más. I okay. won't fight him again. We've got the decision, uh, Ferdy. Let's throw it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, here are the score totals. El juez Terry Smith tiene la pelea. 115 a 114, 115 to 114, a favor de Chavez. El juez Larry O'Connell anota 116 a 114, 116, 114, a favor de González. El juez Chuck Hassett tiene la pelea, 115, 115, 115 to 115, a draw, la decisión es un empate. Here we go, cushions are We're being pelted, it's a draw. Oh, oh Jesus, <laughs> this stuff is coming down, fellas. It's also raining on us. Listen, I, I got hit less than this in the riots in Newark. Well, well, well at, at least the cushions don't hurt, but but there's a lot of them. Let's go to Jim Gray. Take it, Jim. Steve, there's total chaos here. I am with Abel Sanchez and Man Miguel Gonzalez. People are throwing things. This is a scene we have never seen before here. Abel, let us ask you about the decision in the draw. Miguel, do you feel as though you won? Aparte de los primeros rounds, Chávez en, en la mitad de la pelea, pero creo que cerré fuerte. I think that I won the first four or five rounds. I think Chávez won a couple in the middle, but I think I closed real hard. Did you feel as though it would be tough to gain a decision here because even though you are from Mexico, because of the popularity and the legend of uh, Julio Cesar Chávez? I think it would be hard to gain a decision here with Julio, being the legend and being you here, but in all of a sudden, he's the legend. I think that the public... Este, apoya al gran campeón y creo que quizás los jueces se impresionaron por eso, ¿no? por enfrentar al gran campeón y quizás de dar una decisión equivocada podría haber muchos más. Sí, yes, I think that uh, him being the legend that he is, I think the public and the judges sometimes are affected by that, but I understand that. The two finally get a chance to meet here. Julio, did you feel as though, did you feel as though you won this fight? Abel will, will translate for you as well. Que no peleaba, él hizo muy buena pelea. Yo creo que una, una revancha tendría más oportunidad de ganar, ya que me preparía mejor y tendría más tiempo para, para, para bajar de peso y agarrar más ritmo de pelea. I think it was a close fight. It's been a long time since I fought. I think Miguel fought a great fight. I, I need, I, I would like a rematch. I can get him better shape. I had a little hard time with the weight, but I think a rematch is, is due. You would like to have a rematch, see? 
Yeah, you could okay, so that's you the you I think we both deserve a rematch. You like a rematch, Miguel? Yo pienso que sí. La verdad se me siento muy bien, muy contento de haber peleado con el gran campeón. Y pues bueno, yo creo que una revancha lo diría todo ya que tenemos el mismo tiempo. You two were long-time friends. Are you now bitter enemies still? The, the relationship has changed. How are things now after this fight? Usted y él eran amigos antes y, y entre esta pelea se hicieron como enemigos. ¿Qué piensa usted? Así es, así es el boxeo, y, pero tú puedes ver que finalmente terminamos echándonos la mano. I think that that's boxing. I think that uh, everybody can see that it ended up being a great fight. We have both respect for each other. Thank you both. Let's get out of the ring while everybody's still in one piece. Back to you, Steve. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jim Gray.